I'm looking for a mini PC that is smaller than an ITX build or a laptop, but still powerful enough to edit my videos on or even game on. Something that I could even fit in my pocket. We came across this, the Caddis Mine. At its core is it a portable workstation, but I decided to go with this due to the portable modular design. This can link with Caddis Mine peripherals seamlessly, which can fulfill different usage needs as required. I'll explain a bit more on that later. Now this particular unit is a prototype from Kickstarter, but I really needed a unit as soon as possible because we have packs coming up next month. Unboxing the Caddis Mine, you can expect to receive the Mind, the power adapter, manual and warranty card. We also have the Mind Dock Package which comes with the mine dock, manual, and warranty card. The mine feels robust and resilient. It should withstand travel and daily handling. I mean, it looks super clean and compact. The mine comes in at 146 millimeters in length, 105 millimeters in width, and 20 millimeters in height. It also weighs in at 0.43 kilograms. Now, when actually weighing this, I found out that it was magnetic because it's stuck to the base of the scales. So if you really wanted to, you could actually mount this to anything with a metal surface, under a metal desk, on on a metal wall, even on the fridge if you wanted to. That way you can keep it out of sight if that's what you prefer. Spec-wise, we are looking at an Intel Core i7-1360P 12-core 16-thread processor. That's four performance cores and eight efficiency cores. It has built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 memory, and this is running at 5200 megahertz. We also have one included Gen 4 NVMe drive at one terabyte capacities, and an empty Gen 3 NVMe slot if you like to expand further. The Mind also has built-in Wi-Fi 6E connectivity. Speaking of specs, I did make mention of Mind peripherals. Coming out soon will be Mind graphics, which will also support Thunderbolt for other devices, and it is the equivalent of a 4060 Ti graphics card. Mind Studio will be for extreme visual experiences, Mind X-Play for outdoor scenarios, and Mind Talk for meetings. Taking a look at the exterior, we have two USB Type-C ports, which can actually run display. We have a HDMI port and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. And on the bottom of the mind, they have something called the mind link. Now this is how the mind will connect to any of our mind peripherals. And on the front, all we have is the power button with a built-in LED indicator. Now connecting to the mind dock gives us so much more USB ports, more HDMI connectivity, which now supports four 4K 60 Hertz monitors simultaneously and 2.5 gigabit LAN. On the front is another USB port, headphone jack with mic support, and an SD card reader for transfer speeds up to 200 megabytes per second. I actually wanted to test this out. So I ran Crystal Disk Mark on an SD card that was rated for higher speeds than this slot is rated. We did in fact achieve a little bit beyond those 200 megabyte per second speeds. The sides also have built-in speakers. They sound a lot like what you would expect from like a laptop. A little bit of bass and fairly clear. On the top, we have our volume dial, and we also have our fingerprint recognition sensor. Now, firing up this device, it does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Home. But something really fascinating about this device, you could be in the middle of work and you need to leave and go elsewhere. You can take the mind with you, still turned on, thanks to its built-in standby battery. The PC will be able to be in standby mode for up to five hours. It could sleep for up to 25 hours and up to 48 hours in hibernate mode. The mind can be plugged back in so you can continue on where you left off without having to load everything back up. Now browsing the internet, the PC felt very responsive and snappy. Actions were instantaneous and I felt like it made for a good browsing experience. 4K 60 FPS playback was handled with a breeze. There was no frame drop, screen tearing, and it was stutter free for a good viewing experience. As I mentioned before, we have a Gen 4 one terabyte NVMe drive installed. I also benchmarked this in Crystal Disk Mark, and I was pleasantly surprised to see both the read and write speeds up around that 5,000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. Time Spy was our first benchmark for some decent performance, even stating that it could play Battlefield 5 1080p ultra settings at 45 plus. FPS. Night Raid is another benchmark that is specifically built for integrated graphics. Again, it scored well, but this time it thought Battlefield 5 would achieve around 35 plus FPS 1080p ultra settings. Cinebench R23 10 minute run. We achieved 9,295 points, which puts this CPU roughly 400 points above AMD's Ryzen 7 1700X CPU. On to gaming now, and it is quite obvious that integrated graphics is not known for a good gaming experience, so I'm not expecting 
expecting anything spectacular. Games like CSGO or Rocket League, games that are more CPU intensive, run on the mind with no issues at all. On average, 1080p, I was getting around 80 to 100 FPS in Rocket League. It was a very consistent, smooth gameplay experience. We did experience the odd FPS drop into the 70s. We even had our FPS highs in the hundreds. But overall, it was a consistent gaming experience. Games like Cyberpunk or PUBG are more GPU dependent. PUBG 1080p low settings were certainly more playable than Cyberpunk 2077. We were seeing anywhere from 30 to 45 FPS, and personally I'd like to hit that minimum 60 FPS threshold. It definitely felt choppy and wasn't the most pleasant experience. Cyberpunk 2077 was even worse as it is so demanding. 1080p low settings, we were averaging around 23 FPS. There was loads of stuttering and it was almost unplayable. But this is where the mind graphics would come into play and it would be able to handle these games with a breeze. Now for me personally, rendering performance is what I was most interested in. For this, I compared rendering speeds with my 13900K 4090 main system, rendering out a 4K YouTube preset in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I obviously don't expect the mind to come anywhere close to a 4090 13900K system, but I wanted to compare against that because that is what I'm used to for my daily video editing and rendering. So if I could get some solid solid speeds while I'm away from home, then I'm certainly gonna be happy with this as it increases my workflow. My personal PC achieved 21 seconds and the mind achieved one minute flat, considering we get to utilize all of the CUDA cores from the RTX 4090 and all of the extra cores and threads from the 13900K. Now, if I was to pair the mind with my graphics, of course, I'd be able to utilize CUDA with this particular machine. Timeline playback also seems to be fairly smooth. I had it set to one quarter, but of course, as you start adding effects, that is when the project will start slowing down. But for exhibitions like I'll be using it for, we're just doing basic editing. Now, while running each and every test on this machine, I actually had hardware info running in the background. Hardware info allows us to view different information about all of our hardware, including voltages, temperatures, and power draw. Our Caddis mine ended up drawing around 30.5 watts on the CPU package. This is a little over the 28 watt rating, but the boost is rated for 64 watts. So it's certainly within margin of error. Our CPU spiked up to 89 degrees maximum. This likely would have happened during our synthetic benchmarks, such as Cinebench as these are designed to push the hardware to its maximum. During gameplay, our tests on screen were actually showing between 54 and 57 degrees Celsius. Cooling works by pulling air through the copper cooling fins and using vapor chamber liquid cooling is dissipated and pulled out the other side. The particular fan used is a magnetic levitation fan and during our tests, it was quite efficient at doing its job. We recorded an intake temperature of 26.2 degrees under full load and the exhaust temperature was 32.4 degrees for a difference of 6.2 degrees. This shows that it's certainly doing its job in such a small space. Noise levels under full load are surprisingly very quiet. Quiet. That's what makes this such a great workstation. In fact, noise levels were actually hard to pick up in audio. I raised the decibels of my mic pickup and placed it roughly 500 mil away from the machine. And it was picking up the noise of our solar inverter seven meters away before it was even hearing the PC. There is a soft fan noise when under full load, but it's nothing noticeable. It's very, very quiet. Now at the moment, they're doing a super early bird offer of 25% off. So that's 599 US dollars, which is very limited. And that is for the standard version. Our machine is actually the premium version and has 27% off. So that's 799 US dollars. You could also get the mind and mind.combo for 928 US dollars. Personally, I think it's up to the user's use case scenario as to whether I can recommend this or not. For me, it handles everything I need it to do in a timely manner for when I'm away from my main computer. And so my workflow is increased and it makes sense. As it stands, I think the mind graphics is a little on the dearer side. I could pick up a 40 60 Ti graphics card for around 400 US dollars from Newegg. The Caddis Mind Premium and Mind Graphics combo will be around 1498, putting the graphics card at around 699 US dollars. This graphics card, however, has multiple I.O. ports. It also has Thunderbolt connectivity to adapt to other devices. So you need to decide whether that's worth the extra money. The unfortunate thing is the Caddis Mind doesn't actually have Thunderbolt connectivity, which I think would be a neat feature to add to this device so users can use maybe a pre-existing GPU that they already own. For me, creating content and always on the move at exhibitions is actually worth the extra investment for the Mind graphics. But as a normal gaming PC at home, I'd prefer to stick to the cheaper option. 
So there you have it. If you'd like to learn more about the Caddis Mind or any of its peripherals, I'll leave a link in the video description for you to check out further. Thanks for watching.